Uh, so I thought, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I want to put this on you. You're such a sweet girl. She says, well, I'd like to get married. So I said, just keep carrying your dress around. I, I have a feeling it's going to happen. It was special because um, I had the people that I wanted to be there. And that was Sylvester. <laughs> That's all that mattered at the moment to me. Vida Domestica. I love those moments, even when they're incredibly frustrating. The, the noise, the music, the cacophony of their, just, of their craziness just fills my life. It drives me crazy sometimes, but uh, just take it away and it's really a, life becomes quite redundant. You know, I think of them as my, as my kids, but I'm not used to girls, you know. I said, why do they cry? So I go, that's what they do, they cry. I said, well, at everything? He goes, yeah, they do. I said, wow. He's, he's with us all the time. I mean, Frank's over on Sundays eating dinner with us. He's, you know, he takes vacations with us. That's why I, I'm not married because, you know, after a few hours, I'm, I'm done. I'm ready to go home. Uncle Frank, are you staying? Nah, Uncle Frank's got work to do, kids. It's great. I love you. He's a great father. He's the one that my girls go to in the middle of the night to um because they have to either go to the bathroom or they're scared or they need something he, every single night at least one or two of them is in our room coming to get him because he'll take them back to bed he'll lay down with them until they fall asleep and there's not a moment that he doesn't want to spend with his kids my wife's unbelievable she has three kids she runs a business she works extraordinarily hard there's not a lot of help around the house she cooks the meals she takes the kids to school she goes i raise my kids I don't need a, I, I've raised, they're my kids. I had them so I could raise them. We have the same hopes and dreams for our children as everybody else does in our lives. We're very normal, very real. That's a lie. There's nothing normal about this family. <laughs> Until you go to see other people's family, you go, you know what, we're not as bad as we thought. <laughs> I mean, he, he'd rather be home reading a book or writing a story or spending time with us, you know, or on a golf course than he would be uh, being the movie star. Tragedia. The children to me are my, my greatest joy and my most solvent pain, really. They, because I, they can take me the highest and they can take me the lowest. And, and I guess that's just a definition of love, too. I have a child, Sergio, who was diagnosed with autism at a time when no one knew what it was. And, and autism is incredibly tragic that because it, it, it on, on Monday your kid is fine, on Tuesday, gone. Yet he looks perfect, he sounds perfect, whatever, but gone. And he's gone into a dark, dark world that, and uh, rarely they ever come out of it. So you begin to question, you know, God's motives. So to question, science, what it is, and then you start to question yourself. Um, can you feel the same love that you felt before and uh, same responsibility? And, or then again, whose fault is it? You know, it's a, it really, you go through a lot of soul searching. So it takes a lot of work to work that out and you come to terms. And then another tragedy strikes and you, you have a daughter, perfect, beautiful, mother's incredible, born with a hole in her heart. When Sophia was uh, two and a half months, she was diagnosed with having a hole in her heart. She had a VSD. And, um, you know, for Sinai, it was, you know, you couldn't, you know, when you're new parents and you have this new little baby, precious little girl, and to, so the doctors tell you she's going to need open heart surgery at two and a half months old, and she was very, very thin and very weak. I'm thinking she's never going to survive this. You realize you are powerless. You know, you're movie. You, you're just so pros of, you know, guy that has it all, and you do, and then you have nothing. So th now you really start to, to realize that we are not an island, that we are so dependent, so fragile, and so um, co reliant. On, on other people. I knew she was going to make it. There's, you know, when they said to us, and, Cy, and I both started crying after, they said, say goodbye to your little girl. And we're like, what? Say goodbye. <laughs> She's coming back in a few hours, you know. That was hard. That was hard, but, you know, it's, <laughs> But she's great. <laughs> she's beautiful, and she's healthy, and she's a, a very special girl. What I really understood there was, was, the, was the strength of female over male in that kind of situation. That was really, I mean, it, it, yeah, you got, I got physical strength 
and, but my wife showed an amazing emotional strength, which is 10 times stronger than physical strength. Physical strength, anybody can get that. You just vitamins, working out, whatever. Emotional strength, that's, that's deep. It definitely brought us closer. I think, you know, that moment of just being there in the hospital room, we didn't leave. We were there 24 hours a day until she left. I didn't see daylight until I took her home. Você está assistindo biografia. My father, I talked to him the other night, and I told him I had the cold. He's like, Jeff, just work through it, and uh, you know what I mean? Just try to take in fluids, and, and just, you know, go out there and fight your butt off, you know? That's it. Keep stretching it, keep moving it. I think he was thinking the same thing. I think he was thinking, well, you're, you're just nitpicking on little things, but I'm really sick. You no, know? no, there's no doubt. When you go up to their room, and I have to take their food away, well, he likes to, you know, tell people what to do. So he's kind of like a father type person. So they liked him. Hey, Sly, what's going on? I think you should do this. Wear your hair that way. You know, I mean.